Right, welcome back for another video. It's Ehabad once more, Raid Shadow Legends, you know the drill. And today I'm actually joined with none other than Nubkex for an impromptu um, collaboration discussing how to plan ahead for a full account regear. Hey, you know, it's good to be on the channel. It's very relaxing as well not to have the camera this time. I'm like you, I'm a ninja, mysterious, enigmatic. Exactly, <laughs> called, called the faceless one. <laughs> you know how uh, Ash is Harrier and uh, YST is Genzin. I'm, mm. I'm faceless. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Anyway, <laughs> I digress. So the idea behind this uh, this particular video is we should end up with a free regear event coming any day now to allow us to mm. finish Cursed City. I've been leaving a few stages. I actually have left Amius for the time being. Uh, I've left this stage D12 because I need to change things around. My Turagi's not built. Um, the Null Horns are not built to do this stage. I think one of them's built for a secret room, the other's built for Shogun. Uh, Jingwon's never been built, etc. So I'm waiting for the free regear. Same on these last uh, six stages in uh, in Soul Cross. I do, I think I can get it done again, but I do need the free regear. And we've been waiting patiently. You and I actually talked about it earlier this <laughs> week and forgot that there was CBC. So we were meant to record this back on Tuesday, but it didn't happen. <laughs> Instead, we had, a, had to grind hard for that PR CBC. How did yours go? Yeah, the CBC, yeah, it went great. Went well. I think we were actually think we 3 0'd the enemy team. So lots of nice reaction accessories that are. Um, sitting in my inbox because I desperately need to do a click gear cleanse of my accessories. It's just overflowing at the moment. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> oh, we've got your energy saved. Nice. I do. You know, I'm actually burning through mine as we speak because I'm on the mission to get five mythical artifacts from dungeons. Oh, you've so got the best I'm one burning coming through it. up. Yeah, the boots. <laughs> the boots. Oh, the boots. Uh, it took me about 3,000 energy to get the boots. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm a bit behind. I'm a bit behind, but I did it yeah, during CBC, it. so I, I also am a little bit behind where you theoretically could be because if I'd got those boots on the, I think it was the first day of CBC, I could have then done the Force right, uh, right. Iron Twins on that day. I had to wait until today to do it, and it means I can't get Spirit done before we hit. Um, <clears throat> Sorry, um, I can't get both spirit and magic done before we hit void on Sunday, so I'm going to have to do this one next oh, Sunday. Yeah. So I'd say this should oh, probably yeah. be your target is to be able to get to this void one by next Sunday, which means yeah, catch you up. pretty much need to do the force one. I think on Tuesday when force next opens, right, yeah. which was the one just before uh, this quest, and then it's 75 uh, grade. Luckily, luckily th there's a big dungeon divers one right now, yeah, so exactly. I guess I'll max that out. <laughs> Exactly. And don't do the mistake I made with your clan gold either. Uh, I had basically redeemed all my quests before I got it. Ooh, <laughs> so I'll have to wait yeah, until okay. next Tuesday okay. to be able to do this one. <laughs> and we we'll get a clan, yeah. gold, uh, clan quest reset. So if you, if you have any clan quests ongoing right now, try and get to here before you redeem them and before clan quest reset. <laughs> anyway, we're, we're going off on a bit of a tangent there. <laughs> as we usually do i don't expect this to be a short video you know, <laughs> we'll, you we'll viewers know what you're in for exactly <laughs> go make yourself a nice cup of tea and uh and put your feet up because it's going to be a long one and then uh if i jump over quickly to the spreadsheet which is something some of my viewers will have seen before uh the old version which was this when i last did a big regear where i planned it out did the builds. I think I actually did these builds, some of them on, on a live stream or in a video. I can't even remember anymore. It's, uh, it's three months mm -hmm. ago and I, I have a memory as a goldfish. Um, <laughs> so I've got a new version of it. And obviously since I last did that, we've had some crazy champions come out. Things like King Narcisse didn't exist back then. Uh, I pulled Harima since then. Our man's has just come out as well. And we've had... Um, you know, increased gear sets, blessing stat boosts have, have been a thing. We've now got Curse City as well. So there's a lot more going on. And I thought it'd be good to basically have a discussion amongst the two of us, see which champions I should be focusing on, uh, particularly if I want to try and actually 
progress a bit further in live arena and yeah. kind of plan out what uh, target builds. So really the, the key ones that I tend to focus on when mapping out the builds are speed, accuracy, resistance, sets, and then a uh, build style. So if I have a particular HP or defense target, that will be part of the the build itself rather than a stat that I would necessarily worry about in 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 uh, <laughs> you know the the pre build section. I don't know. It, it, it mm. makes sense in my head. It's hard to explain though. <laughs> <laughs> so if we jump back to the game, um, and maybe the best thing to start off with is just looking at the arena champions that I've uh, flagged. Mm -hmm. And the idea here is similar to when we did these roster analysis uh, videos together before. I've already gone through my roster, identified the key champions, nukers, cleansers, strippers, control, support, protection champions, and then I have them tagged. Because you know when you're in live arena particularly, you need to find these champions quickly. So if you don't have them tagged yes. already, it's very hard to actually locate the champion you want. <laughs> Yeah, I've done that. I think when uh, I did the first stream with Narses and Ancora, I'd marked one of them with the tag. And then it's this absolute panic trying to find them. You're like, wait, there's there's Ancora. Where, where's Narses? Oh, my, and you're scrolling through this list. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess the first question is, do you think there's any one I'm missing that I really should add to this list? So if maybe if I take the filter mm. off, I don't know how we can yeah. do this. Because the, the problem is there's so many champions in the game now. right right it's like how do you even begin to look through this and be like yeah <laughs> those are the right arena champions but uh i mean i, I don't yeah. think there's anyone obvious you could argue that maybe the the vlad brothers uh could be um but because i don't have high blessings on them i don't have any yeah yeah like i don't have a net crit I've generally gone for to avoid these champions because they're just going to be so hard to keep alive. <laughs> they don't really have any way of staying alive themselves. Similar with the Turbo. Yeah. You know, I've just sort of, they could be useful in niche circumstances, but I'm, I'm not focusing on them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, there is maybe a couple there. So, oh, Rhonda is an option. Again, th this is, you're mentioning exactly the sort of the problem is I've seen a few potential options, but as you said, they're all low awakening. Uh, which really, especially with how powerful Awakening is now with the extra stats, it makes it tough. Like a zero awakened Ronda, Ronda's a great champion for Arena because of the block revive and the single target damage. But at zero stars Awakening, I'm not sure if you would if you'd actually bother. You know? Um, yeah, exactly. I think you mean the the block passive skills, but. Yeah, sorry, yes, block pack. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking about it's, Sun Wukong counter. <laughs> exactly. It's just it's just yeah. one of those things like you say, particularly in live arena, if you don't have a way of protecting mm. or keeping these squishy attack based champions and they're on very low awakening, you, you're just not going to be able to build a, them strong enough. And, yeah, and the kind exactly. of extreme version of that is even my three star Cantrophon, who's not badly geared and not mm -hmm. that low awakening. I'm actually finding I'm using him less and less, even in tag team, because you've just, you know, it's just so, like Narcy hits yeah. so much harder. <laughs> Harima yeah. brings more to the table, and Sun Wukong hits harder. So generally, mm -hmm. like those yeah. are my three go to nukers I'm finding. And then in situational circumstances, I should find Hefrax more useful because. I quite like pairing him with Sun Wukong, for instance. So when they kill Sun Wukong, he's oh, going to yeah. pop back up. <laughs> Hefrak does his counter. I call it the Phoenix. <laughs> I've labelled it as a team in one of my presets. <laughs> and nice. it's, it's, yeah. it's a lot of fun uh, as, a, as a combo. <laughs> but it just means that even, even Leoris, I find I'm, I'm picking less than I used to. Yeah. And even if we touch on that there, like you've got you know, Kandrafon as falling off option but still there but then we've got wukong leorius um i mean even just wukong leorius we're already i think digging in pretty hard for live arena terms into like our best gear and if the more champions we add on to that like the gear really starts to fall off and you can really notice a huge difference like i think helicath is a great example here where for me i'd love to use my helicath but I just don't have any good gear, so he doesn't do any damage because I don't have any gear left uh, at all. Um, 
So yeah, that's something to watch out for. I think Emic Trunkhart is, is one there I see as well that, that could potentially be good. I don't know if you got him used for specific uh, teams. Looks like you maybe do with protection. Um, but he's a pretty, uh, yeah, I guess the, uh, Bronco would be proud, the 271 Emic. <laughs> um, but exactly. uh, yeah, he, he's pretty good for Arena as well. But yeah, you might be using him elsewhere. Yeah, I, I use him in both uh, Iron Twins and Shogun. Um, okay, I've yeah, well, that's one we're not going to use in, for a, in a Hydra team, but never, never end up bothering. Uh, I mm. will one day. Uh, I also farmed out the Masteries, but never set them. That's, uh, that's another common <laughs> theme on my account. <laughs> but like you say, I think that's the key thing is when you're trying to build your absolute best champions, you can't mm-hmm. go that deep. And it's the same issue with uh, I'd like to use Tormin more. And if I had a higher blessing, uh, I probably would. Because I think he has niche uses, but he just doesn't yep. hit hard enough as a one star. <laughs> and I don't have a Sithy to bring the increased defense. And he just, yeah. does, he just doesn't do enough damage. And the same issue with Helicath is like, I just, I don't know. I, I, I find that by the time I'm thinking of building him, all my absolute best gear is gone. And he, they'll do good damage. The same like with Ragash as well. They'll do good damage in PvE settings, but they're just not going to cut it. In, in top end arena, whether it's tag team or even then live arena, which is that that step up even further. Yep, exactly. And the other area sim- in a similar vein is is Hydra. You know, I mm-hmm. find once you've got your absolute best gear being allocated to your best champions, the drop off is so quick that these other champions don't really <laughs> swap in. <laughs> and they'll work in a lot of PvE settings, but not that you know that that absolute max damage in your your three best hydra teams not certainly not in live arena which i think unfortunately yeah. is not open so we can't really jump in and talk about <laughs> it right there but it's the same equivalency if we we jumped in here you can see actually the last fight i did there's uh, Candrophon did make it in and that's actually because this mm-hmm. team i went against uh speed armand's team and all four of these are in uh, stone skin <laughs> oh yeah okay yeah, yeah, yeah. Way of going against it <laughs> going against them for that but you know even Loris didn't make the cut and and you know you got the new mm-hmm. roles you got king narcis you've got wukong harima and and then like if i had cantrif on Loris well built i just the drop off in, in and hefrag you know i'm just never going to use all these other nukas it's just the gear drop off is too fast unless you i think get lucky and pull a soul that can mix yeah. it up yeah, 100%. Uh, and actually, interesting, you mentioned the stone skin thing there, and, and you're obviously doing high level Hydra, certainly for any viewers that are doing high level Hydra as well and winning Hydra clashes. This is, I think, a huge deal now for me for gearing for endgame stuff. So specifically Hydra and Arena. For Arena, it's looking to get champions with accessories into four, uh, four piece stone skin. So you can you know, like you could have a Hefrak, for instance, in four piece stone skin and four piece lethal. This is one of the um, builds we're going to talk about. Look. <laughs> is, uh, ah. I believe I have two viable uh, accessories here, though this one's not nice. particularly yeah. great. I think there was one that was better. That one was the one that was better. Um, so Hefrak could go, instead of being in six piece stone skin, could go to four piece uh, with four piece lethal. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. I kind of wanted to do the same thing on Sun Wukong, actually, which is kind yeah. of a bit unusual. I think most people put him in either um, either Lethal Cruel or Lethal Perception. But I actually wanted to put him into Lethal Stone Skin uh, to give me like a, a, an interesting counter against Armands. That's a bit of an unusual one, but I don't have. I've got exactly. Yeah, I've got two banners but no no rings <laughs> and no amulets in stone skin it just it's the yeah, rng I, I, of it <laughs> that's it it's it's super random but like when we do go into live arena like the counter to stone skin is either very very rare champions that can do hp burn explosion and that's so niche i've never seen anyone do it or then bombs but bombs are also exceptionally rare at the moment so stone skin is just so strong uh, and like you said, it also protects you from Armands, which uh, I'm sure is a champion already annoying many people <laughs> in uh, Live Arena. So yeah, Stone Skin gives you at least some protection from his A2 anyway at the start of the fight. Um, so it's it's a pretty big deal, and that can really affect 
how you're building champions being like, ah, oh, okay, I can do, uh, I can have stone skin accessories in this faction, but not this one. So that can alter your builds. But I'm trying very much to get almost, almost all the live arena champs with stone skin accessories. And then a lot of Hydra champs is, oh, can I actually build, and even dungeon champs, can I build nine piece protection uh, to get that extra damage bonus? Um, Cause that's really a huge amount of extra damage for, for Hydra, right? Like, mm. I've got my CFI in nine piece protection. That's 15% damage boost for that team in Hydra, potentially. I, I was going to uh, ask you, what's good. your feeling on protection versus stone skin for those kind of big support champions like a Sifi or a Duchess? Because obviously, a lot, Duchess is popular in stone skin in, in arena. And, uh, yeah. But my main Duchess, I actually run in, in six piece protection. I would like to do nine piece. But uh, the way RNG works again, <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, two. I have a, a a very good ring and an amulet, but no protection banner. Um, instead, right, of, right. in Demon Spawn, I seem to have more stone skin that's dropped, but no banners. Mm -hmm. It's just like it's infuriating RNG with this uh, <laughs> with these <laughs> Hydra clashes because I seem to end up getting multiple of the same, uh, but nothing else another funny one is i've never had a reaction amulet for demon spawn Ooh, which is <laughs> incredible when you look at it i when are they going to add the ability to filter on accessories i know oh set? yeah because it's getting Please out of hand it's getting absolutely out of hand but yeah, yeah like some, <laughs> the amount of reaction if i scroll through you can see like there's a lot of it Dude. on the account i've never yeah. had uh an amulet like look at all these <laughs> any, any any good ogren tribes because i'm absolutely full of reaction banners <laughs> oh hey the mythical is good just just pull the mythical easy problem uh, solved <laughs> <laughs> you'll notice actually that's one thing there's no mythical on my account yet so that probably yeah, would yeah. mix things up uh quite i, I know the feeling <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're a fellow mythical -less, uh player then yeah i'm afraid so wah, wah. <laughs> right, so I'm jump back to the spreadsheet to really focus it in. Um, and I'd say mm. probably the first thing we should touch on is how much speed are you targeting on your nukas for live arena? Because I'm thinking I need to actually push them even higher than uh, than maybe even 250 yeah. isn't necessarily fast enough. Interesting. Yeah, for me at the moment, I'm trying to get them usually like 240. Is what I'm targeting, but that's with four piece stone skin. Um, so yeah, but that's the thing for live arena speed is just so powerful that yeah, uh, you can absolutely go 250 or, or higher. You're gonna give up damage, but it can it can definitely definitely work. So yeah, I think two 250 should be I think fine, and definitely like at the level. Like you're you're in what was it silver four right now? Yeah, I'm in silver so you've four. Got, um, it's, it's actually yeah. quite a funny one. I wonder if I can show it to you. Can we actually go there? Leaderboards, yes, I can. Uh, so yeah, my my lifetime uh, fights oh, is that win still rate, under five hundred. <laughs> I've done so little, so little no. live arena. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> I just hate it with a passion. And I just checked my builds whilst we were uh, chatting. So at the moment, Sun Wukong's at two thirty, and King mm -hmm. Nars is at two forty seven. So I've I've penciled in already that I think I want to push them to about two fifty. And then the other kind of big discussion point is how much accuracy uh, do you like on your Sun Wukong? Because I've had him at about 250, yeah. uh, about 270 at the moment is where I've got him. And I actually kind of feel like I maybe want him a little bit higher than that, but I maybe want to push him to 350. Yeah, I probably would. Like, I'm just taking it a gander, like, especially because Stone Skin gives resistance. Like, my, I'm looking at a lot of my champions that are built with no intent of resistance, and they are coming in at about 350. Like, Sifi in nine piece protection is just happens to be sitting 350 resist. Haven't built any resist on her at all. <laughs> That's just where she's at. So, yeah, for any, yeah, I think about 350 accuracy is, is enough to basically slap down the buffs off of, yeah, anyone that's not intentionally building resistance. And then obviously champions that do intentionally build resistance, like an ultimate death knight, like you're never gonna strip them anyway. So unless you're going full accuracy, it's kind of like, don't even bother, you know? Ah, um, exactly. It's, it's a double-edged sword though, isn't it? With accuracy, because the more yeah. you put on, the more that polymorph 
<laughs> becomes well, a problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That is true. <laughs> yeah. Equally, Harima. Like Harima, I mean, what, what Harima so different for? Feel? If she's have sorry, you gone, gone. Have you gone accuracy down the Harima route, or have you gone for Nilak? Because there's. I there's arguments oh, I don't both ways. Or if you did have her, then hypothetically, what would... If, uh... I, if I did have her, I, I'd probably go zero accuracy and just go max damage. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> much what I've ended up with at the moment. I do want to speed her up, but uh, I mm -hmm. my kind of rough accuracy with her is enough to do the sort of average PvE kind of content you're doing. And it, I can, yeah. you can pretty much end up there inadvertently which is anything around sort of about 225 you'll pretty mm -hmm. much just get by accident <laughs> you don't have to aim for it but i i guess softly i'm probably targeting around 200 uh but yeah I, I probably won't actually add it in to a build parameter but i'll just scroll through and if i see one that gives me the 200 plus then at least i know that she will land uh in most of the pv content at least up to Soul Cross in Curse City. Yeah, yeah, and and nice thing about both Harima and Sun Wukong as well is like you put your best gear on those champions, and they're both gonna smash Hydra as well. Like you're getting two end game contents that the both smash Soul Cross too. You're getting three end game content uh, from like one gear set of gear on a specific champion. That's pretty massive. Um, because yeah, that that's something I run into. That's a pain is when you you have to gear. Like a Hydra only champion, you're like, ah, oh, well, I don't have any. You get like Rasselvark. <laughs> I'd love to slap some insane lethal or merciless on him, but uh, it's all it's all used up for Arena and then left. He's a lot of fun actually in Hydra. <laughs> oh yeah, he's great. <laughs> he's really strong. <laughs> I do have. This. I've actually got mine um, currently rocking at uh, 305 speed in lethal <laughs> this is part of the problem <laughs> is that i spread my lethal quite quite wide uh, as a result yeah. but i do i use him in fire Knight hard at the moment and right, hydra right. so it felt like a reasonable investment and again he wasn't my number one uh lethal build i think my my best build were lioris and sun wukong and then he mm -hmm. was, I think he was third, and then Yakal was fourth. So I kind of went two PvP, then two PvE. And then because most of my other yeah. PvP nukers were built in stone skin, there wasn't really any crossover. So it was it was quite efficient sort of usage of your gear. If you've got this kind of idea ahead about how you're gonna split up the gear, you can end up kind of building better overall over like a, a broader spectrum of your account. But just making sure you're not using the same set over and over, because <laughs> obviously you're not going to have that much depth <laughs> in each set. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But I guess uh, any any other sort of builds that I've got here that you see as being uh, problematic. I guess the other question would be how fast should supports be run, uh, mm. particularly in live arena. And and you know if I look at my main Duchess, which currently is six piece. Um, protection yeah that, actual, that would be the one i'd be like that's the one to change <laughs> my actual speed at the moment is 290 and the only reason she's at 290 is because my cleansers aren't fast enough for me to make her faster so right now the main cleanser i run with her is queen ancora who's at 291 <laughs> okay so, right, right so i actually slowed <laughs> down my duchess to make sure she was beneath Queen Angora. Oh, um, damn, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, yeah, I, I would say so I, I was seeing that. So that does just in protection is just for is that's mainly just for arena then. Well, I use her kind of everywhere. Um, right. I, I use right. her in a brutal Hydra team. I use her in arena. I particularly enjoy the six piece protection in arena going against enemy Sun Wukongs against Uko, although we see Uko less. Uh, yeah, you know, the, the, the fact that you can protect the buffs is so big. Obviously, if I had nine piece, it would be that much, that much more. Um, and then obviously, I'd also get, you know, the 5% per buff <clears throat> damage increase, which would be big in arena. But with yeah. our mans, mm. it's, it's a bit of a problem uh in protection 
And it it kind of leaves me in split mind. Do I transition her to stone skin or do I, <clears throat> sorry, I, I just got, got like a frog in my throat or do I up <laughs> the resistance massively? Because that's the other option. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think for Arena, I, I think Duchess would typically either be in bolster or stone skin, I would say. Uh, you obviously probably don't have any bolster because <laughs> you know, you're yeah, not a spender. The, 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 the bolster's not good enough. And I've, yeah, I've, yeah, yeah. my second Duchess is in stone skin, but my second Duchess is not uh, awakened. Or right, anything. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I went for these two options where one Duchess is in, in stone skin. And again, it's from what we discussed, you know, like there's a limited amount of like S tier stone skin. And if I had yeah. to pick, who do I really want to get into my absolute best stone skin right now is probably Armand's and Mithrala yep. are probably the two that I want in my best stone skin uh, yeah, that's although fair. Yeah. maybe Mithrala now with Live Arena I don't tend to pick her maybe she actually drops down the pecking order and doesn't need to be in the best stone skin but when I was really focused on just building for tagged she got mm -hmm, mm -hmm. my best uh, kind of support stone skin as did Duchess too and for pure build, I because I wasn't really building anyone else in a lot of protection. I think I currently have Duchess and Elva in protection. I was able to put all of my best pieces on on Duchess, and then um, Duchess two and actually Pythian have mm -hmm. the stone skin options. But you know that's that's when I was really favouring tag team. But maybe for Live Arena. It's it's not as obvious that maybe maybe it should be stone skin, but then you do run the risk of if as soon as that stone skin's run out, it's not really bringing you anything. Whereas I always feel like the protection set's always useful, no matter how long the fight goes and no matter what content you're doing, it's always yeah. useful to have. I, I think with, with Duchess in particular, what strong is that because. She gets up the veil, and then if she's still in stone skin for a turn, that's that can be really a pain for a lot of people to deal with. Like, you know, if, if Sun Wukong can obviously strip it off with his A3, but then he can't nuke you with the A2 on turn one, that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm not actually sure because I don't have a Duchess uh, how she plays into an Arman. So, that would definitely be interesting. Um, but yeah, like uh, definitely probably the six piece stone skin, the two turn stone skin Duchess is. Probably the way to go for uh, Life Arena. I would also say maxing the effective HP is probably not the way to go as well for Life Arena in particular because you're going up against often champions with built in ignore defense like Narcis or, hmm. you know, Jorgid or Rotus. Uh, and then obviously everyone's running <laughs> Lethal or Savage or Merciless and they're running Helm Smasher. Defense tends to be not very good. Um, so it's it's usually more about just stacking as much HP as possible uh, because the value of defense is so much lower. Um, so yeah, like you you could probably be going for a stone skin with like a, you'll, you'll pick up a good chunk of defense just naturally, obviously anyway, and then just maxing out for Duchess like as much health as possible. Or as you said, a high resistance build is also super viable too. That's something that you can do. Uh, but yeah. I'm not a super expert on the Duchess because I don't have her, so I've never had to make that decision of how I would build them. But uh, for me, I'd probably be leaning towards a six-piece stone skin for the Duchess, honestly. Um, I think those are the the things that are hardest to figure out. Because so I think once you've right. picked who are your most important champions, like, you know, what's what's your number one, maybe number one and two supports, your number one, again, maybe second on the control buff strips not really a big thing anymore to be honest i i don't even really focus yeah. on them i haven't used kaima and arena in in donkeys <laughs> i still yeah, use yeah, yeah. Two and tag team, but i never i never pick <laughs> them in live arena because they're too one-dimensional you only got five picks in live arena you have to pick two damage dealers you basically have to pick two support and then you've got one flex and it's yeah. rare that you're going to pick a buff stripper in that flex yeah. because of polymorph <laughs> yeah exactly yeah yeah and also of course stone skins the problem is it's like oh well oh, exactly. you know let's say i'm relying on romantu to debuff them i mean it's a 50 50 no matter how much accuracy he has to get through the stone skin 
though. Yeah, I, like you said, I think you do see Wukong's obviously stripping buffs off the damage dealers that aren't usually running poly. And uh, some of the mythicals can buff strip as well. But that's about as much buff stripping as you see. Yeah, the legendary buff strips and certainly the epics. Yeah, I, I never see those really any much in Live Arena anymore. So I, I do think even if I stay protection or if I go to stone skin, one mm -hmm. thing I'm definitely going to target is to push that resistance up to at least okay. make it difficult. Because I think, like, I've looked at how much what I can build our mans as in stone skin and perception, and I can get about 300 speed and about 700 ack. That's mm -hmm. pretty much the max I can do. Uh, I could drop the speed and maybe increase the accuracy a bit, but... No, it's it's difficult when you're building <laughs> with a four piece stone skin, unless you've got like Kraken gear. I think that's pretty right. much as <laughs> as good as it can get. So along those same lines, if I can get Duchess to, you know, even seven hundred or more resistance, I'm in with a shout of actually being able to resist those warlords, those Armands, who yes. are yeah. being built with high speed and high accuracy. Because I'm not in, I'm not in gold four live arena. I'm not in platinum classic. Like I don't need mm -hmm. to have the absolute craziest builds. I've been running Ancora with about six ninety resistance at the moment in four piece stone skin. And actually, weirdly enough, because there was no free regear, so I, I gave her stuff that was available at the time. Four piece guardian because <laughs> I don't have oh, anyone right. else in wow. guardian. <laughs> 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 so uh, I, I didn't want to strip off my regen from other champions. I don't have good bolster because I never bought it. And uh, I wanted something that gave her a bit of healing. So I actually mm. went, I went for the guardian uh, route. So here's the build because I got two. I've got a nice attack of <laughs> amulet with accuracy, exactly Ooh. what she needs. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> but it's like I don't want to I don't want to chaos all this either, because it's actually <laughs> in it's theory, a good bomb. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a great bomb amulet and Gaius is in that faction. <laughs> so yeah. Like, yep. it, it's something that's good <laughs> enough that I wouldn't want to break it but it's the only stone skin amulet and i don't think i have a stone skin banner actually i do so i could use that but i think i went resistance uh, yeah, yeah in reaction uh, instead Just slap a resist glyph on her at least on that necklace come on now look at that yeah no, I probably even should. a little I one you know we'll go for a big one why not the big there one a 10 for the video That's grand. yeah um <laughs> so that gets it to 702 but I'm, yeah. I'm not sure the Guardian Round really is bringing that much. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, not too much. But not hey, too much. I, mean, I think I would right. prefer to put her in regen or something. I do like the four-piece mm -hmm. stone skin. I could see an argument to go to, to six-piece. But then, because you don't have any form of healing coming from her kit, yeah. I do feel like yeah, yeah, you yeah. want something. Um. So that's why I'm leaning towards basically putting her in regen. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, like I have her in the four stone skin and bolster, but like, yeah, that's the 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 Kraken option, isn't it? So yeah, I think the free to play <laughs> option probably, yeah, probably regen. The Guardian's not bad though, but yeah, probably the regen is the way. What have you found? Who have you built anyone for resistance? And have you? Um, hmm. No, what, I've, what not, have you I've not. I've not bothered. Is the is the good threshold? Because I feel like so, I'd, like, I'd like to get closer to 800, to be honest. But I just don't yeah, have the gear. I, <laughs> I can't get yeah, those levels. I, <laughs> I mean, 800 resist is pretty darn safe because, like, for a lot of these characters, right, you know, you, you're trying to prioritize a lot of speed as well. Like, so for me, for Armands, like, I'm probably going to be trying to build as much speed as possible. And I'm probably going to only aim for about 500 accuracy, which is enough accuracy to realistically well strip anyone who's not building resistance and it's enough accuracy to people that are trying to often build like tankiness and resistance like to get higher than that resist you're you're typically giving up a lot of survivability so it kind of i'll probably just go like okay i'd rather have the speed right just go first because so long as i go first i'm in a good shot to win um and like, like yeah it means our mans can't polymorph an ultimate death knight but it's like we'll just have to deal with it 
So yeah, that's be, probably what I'm going to do. Just bypass the ultimate death knight anyway and polymorph someone else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I, it's a similar build, and this is a, one of the problems I run into is that I've got a few champions trying to do that with like perception gear, but like uh, Yumiko is in, for me in a similar build, which is trying to do a lot of speed. And then I usually am I'm only aiming for about the 500 accuracy again. So it's enough to lock out all of their damage and it's enough to lock out probably a lot of any of the revivers or anything that aren't building resistance. Um, because yeah, to build enough to build 700 or 800 accuracy, you do have to give up quite a bit of speed. And uh, yeah, I kind of often in live arena, it's more about I, I want to just make sure that they go first <laughs> and lock them out and I'm good, especially because there's more champions coming with speed auras, obviously, like Armands is a good example, but uh, like, yeah, I'm often picking the Seafy myself because I have her. So my speed aura is often a little bit lacking. So it's mm. like, yeah, I kind of want Yumiko to be able to go first and lock them out, or at least some of them out, uh, even if, you know, they're building potentially fast teams as well. But it's always a balance, right? And the meta on that shifts, but <laughs> it probably depends on who you ask as well. Like I know uh, Final Compachi, I think, has a lot of very high resist builds on his account, which is quite different. So that was like a very, and he's very successful as well in Arena. So that was like an interesting thing where I, I've gone a very different way. Yeah. I mean, I don't have a one of the top tier lockout champions, so there's no Warlord or Yumiko or any of the, the mythicals that do it. Mm. So... I only have Basher, and I, I I never use him in live arena because he's too one dimensional and he's too squishy. It's just like I'll yeah. be flipping a coin. I I'd either win quickly <laughs> or I'll definitely lose. Like there's no way of coming back if you if you don't win in that first turn, and because it's only yeah. a, really a one turn lockout. I know it, it says two turns, but <laughs> because you cool down at the beginning of your turn, by their second turn, it's actually disappeared. It's it's a it's a weird raid uh, concept. When it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, of abilities versus debuff duration because it works the other way around. But anyway, <laughs> I digress <laughs> a little bit tangential again. But it means that, you know, you, I don't think Bash is viable in Live Arena because you only have those five slots again and he's too one dimensional. It's a bit like Hydra where you, you need to bring champions that bring more than one function because you've got so few slots and you don't know which one's going to be going to be banned it's just it would be so high risk for me to pick basher uh yeah because he just like for us much. especially like so far into the game the champions are, are so strong now that yeah basher is definitely for us i think for for an earlier game player i think he could be amazing like he could win you some fights for sure but yeah for accounts like of our level he's not he's not gonna work he's yeah, gonna absolutely. get yeah absolutely. he's just gonna die and do nothing really like i i I actually had him in stone skin at one point, but I took it off because mm. other champions needed it more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it yeah, didn't yeah. change. It wasn't really changing, uh, the, the, you know, changing the tide that much by having him in stone skin. Um, yeah, and, and I, I uh, similar to Candrafon, like I find I'm picking him less and less, even in tag team. So he's he's fallen out of not just the meta, but but my meta to the point that I yep. wouldn't care about building him. I also tried this uh, res build of Kaima, but I could never get him to a high enough uh, point. So, you know, for me, that the, and, and even the Kaima one, like he doesn't need to be at 600 accuracy anymore because I never use him in an arena. I can drop him yeah. down just <laughs> for enough to have for, for PVE and, and be done with it and just have them mm -hmm. both built yeah. in good PVE builds and just not care and just go any and just go, you know, literally they could just be in any build. <laughs> obviously yeah, don't exactly care. and i think that's i mean and funny enough i i i have been using kaimar a bit just with the cfi team um but i think i'm gonna be with once this light re-gear goes live i'm gonna be swapping his gear uh because he I, he's not useful enough in live arena it's so niche could be swapping his gear onto Armand's. so Armand's gonna kind of get the nice fast high accuracy stuff and yeah as you said kaimar is probably gonna get demoted to just uh be a nice reset boy for all the pve content Poor old Romantu as well, though. Yeah. I'm still on the fence, because I feel like he he should get good gear, but he just doesn't get used that much. <laughs> yeah, he's he is, like you said, he's very niche. Um, if you got crazy gear, you can build him as like damage as well, <laughs> like stone skin damage and enough accuracy to somewhat do his job. Yeah, he's a he's an interesting one. Uh, yeah, I've I've not really 
ended up using him much, to be honest. So poor man too. If they nerf Polymorph again, he'll be massive. But <laughs> he got better. He's usable now, I think, with the Polymorph. And if you're not fighting people with lots of Polymorph, yeah, he can be great. Like I do see him sometimes. Polymorph is his nemesis, and Stone Skin Polymorph, they're both his nemesis. Uh, yeah, as you've, yeah, I think you've done the right thing with his speed. I, one or two speed, uh, just slightly faster than Nukers, really. Um, so that, you know, let them run out Stone Skin one turns and get buffs off, and then you can remove them. That's usually the play, I think. Yeah, the tricky bit there is that used to always be faster than pretty much all my Nukers, including when I need to use him in those certain uh, Doom Tower uh, floors where you run him with the seer so i always had to have him faster yes. than seer once seer's got the um whirlwind of death so that's actually seer plus 18 and then plus two so at least i have an idea of what i need to build him at but now we have <laughs> <Jeez. live> arena <laughs> nukas it's like I, I don't know it becomes a bit awkward to the point that like you say maybe actually the better option is to build him a bit like a sun wukong Put him down at 350 accuracy and go high damage but it's 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 a tricky one i do still use him in tag team i do find him quite useful there where you can pick and choose when you bring him in and i actually find him really useful yeah. against king narcis for instance um people mm -hmm. typically aren't running king narcis or uh or queen ancora in polymorph at least i don't tend to see them those blessings in uh in tag team so i usually have a good chance of running Romantu against them, blocking those passives. And uh, yeah. Has, yeah. Has in that case, if a... he's working for you in, in tag, probably keep him focused on that then. That makes sense. I, th I think that's You've probably... You've got enough camps the... for Live Arena. <laughs> exactly. Like, it's, it's, it is tricky, though. And, and, and this mm -hmm. is, I think, what... Like, if I find it, this is being a, a tricky decision-making process, I'm sure most people watching this video feel the same way, that it is... It's very difficult to decide which champions you absolutely should put your best gear on and then actually making those critical decisions about how you balance the speed versus, you know, accuracy, HP, damage set, which sets to pick. And then we haven't even talked about which blessings and which uh, <laughs> which masteries to go for. But, uh, you know, the whole thing becomes a real matrix effectively of, of, of all these different decisions and all the interrelationships i mean we're already what 40 odd minutes into the video and we basically only <laughs> talked about arena champions so let's just talk briefly on on hydra um mm -hmm. and you know if i jump back into the game first off and run over to hydra and i i, I you can see the nightmare team i've been running uh which is necmo cantra ugo shamil uh, Mithrala and um, Newt, and it's it's mm -hmm. always a toss up between Shamil and Newt for who does the most damage, which I think surprises <laughs> some people because they would always think that Newt would would out damage, but actually Shamil can hit like a truck. <laughs> yeah, he's he's surprisingly good. Yeah, uh, I I use him so much. <laughs> he's the crutch, right? He's he's the man eater Demitha of of Hydra for sure. Absolutely. And my intent actually with this team, because uh, I very recently pulled Grizzur, is to straight swap Cantra for, oh, for Grizzur. Yeah. Uh, but I'm also actually kind of tempted these days to remove Ugos from, from uh, Relentless and free it up. Uh, I have been running both my Ugos in Relentless. Um, and I, I, I do like Ugo in Relentless, but I could also see myself putting Ugo in Affinity Breaker instead. Yeah, that's an interesting alternative. Yeah, I, I've thought about that as well. I, I think I still lean towards the Relentless more, but um, Affinity Breaker, yeah, I could see that too. Yeah, for sure. And that's the team I have been running in Brutal, but I have to say Sakir is really struggling in this team to to keep up because <laughs> Gwendolyn, Razzlebarg, and Michinaki do so much more damage <laughs> than my Sakir right. does. And my Sakir, I, this is quite a squishy team, by the way. It's like yeah, that's super it. suicidal. <laughs> <laughs> We've got like 2k <laughs> defense on Razzlebarg, 2.4 on Gwendolyn, can't even break 40k <laughs> HP. And Sakir, again, like a really squishy attack based. And, and then obviously Michinaki, but uh, I, I run it on like pretty much full auto just with click targeting um it's quite a fun yeah. team actually but sakir i just find she she doesn't seem to keep up but one of the main reasons she's there actually is for the aoe uh weaken and decrease defense although obviously michinaki is also bringing it 
So I could probably swap her out, uh, to, to be honest. But it's like what I guess the, the the kind of the interesting conversations become about who do you prioritize and in which sets. So I've been running right. both my Shamils in Reflex. I actually really, really like Shamil in Reflex. I think it's, yeah, he's it's, extremely it's a good. lot of yeah. fun to have him in Reflex. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think the Shamil bills look great, honestly. Yeah, that's exactly what you want. Yeah, because he ignores all defense typically in his A2 anyway. Reflex, it, it's a huge damage boost. Yeah, very, very nice. Any other obvious hmm. changes that I could prioritize in uh, in this uh, regear? Um, yeah, like Michinaki, that's one that doesn't need to be in Relentless. It's good. It makes him obviously more consistent with his debuffs. Michinaki, if he has an increased defense buff, though, like just slapping him in. If you've got any lethal and savage, probably does more, right? Because Relentless doesn't benefit his passive, right? The, the ally attacks, but Savage and Lethal does. I also, I, I do like him somewhat in Provoke as well, because again, the ally uh, attack passive, he does get some extra hits in. Not super reliable with all of his turns and AoEs is much better, but it is an interesting option if you do need someone else in Provoke. But yeah, I, I, I lean towards Lethal with Michinaki's being the best, or, you know, something equivalent to that. Hmm, not see I, anything I, else. I would like to put him in Lethal. And I think I have had him in Lethal before, but I think, again, it was one of those situations where there's so many champions now in Lethal, particularly when you add Hello? a city. Maybe it's just a, okay, we're a back. temporary thing. We're back. Of lag. we're back. A little bit of lag. Yeah, I, I think I've, I've, I've had him in Relentless. I've had him in Lethal. He's back in Relentless mm -hmm. at the moment, I think, or he was at least last time I built him. <laughs> it's one of those things. This, this was pretty much from... The problem with building Michinaki in Lethal is that you're using, you know, your leaf. Well, this is my point. Is like there's so many yeah. champions. Uh, actually, let's jump back into the game. So many champions. Um, with I wonder if I can. You can't search in this game through people that are wearing lethal, <laughs> unfortunately. But there's with Curse City, you know, like all these kind of mid tier nukas as well are sitting in like Savage, uh, or Stun or. The, you know that I just uh, I'm picking bad examples. <laughs> there must be others somewhere. Uh, one of these uh, champions. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. Like, there's so many nukas mm. built these days. So here's another one, Daithy and, and Lethal. So it's like I don't know. There's just so many champions that you need to get into Lethal that it's it's so scarce that you. I yeah. don't know. I I, know <laughs> I didn't need anyone else. I didn't really have any other damage dealer in Relentless. So he ended up getting my best relentless, basically. And, okay. And it yeah. kind of worked that, out. That, again, it. that makes sense. Yeah. And it's it's about, you know, yeah, if you don't have the the optimal gear, it's what's a really good other option. Um I see you don't have too many in cursed. I think curse set is is really strong to definitely get at least hex into every team. And curse can go on almost anyone who's got AoE attacks. It's very flexible. Um it, it can. The reason I have no one in cursed is not because I didn't want to. <laughs> oh, you don't have any. <laughs> it's uh, it's not been kind to me. We jump back into the game. I think I've got a bit more now. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm beginning to get enough to build someone in a good build in Cursed. So I could probably actually put one champion in it now. Um, but I, yeah. I had I had Lydia in it. Was the only build uh, that I had. I, I didn't have enough Cursed to even get a second build. But yeah. you know that was what, two and a half good months ago now, and Lydia's in my normal uh, Hydra team or hard, whatever it is. Uh, yeah. Hard, I think it is. Um, but I now do have a bit more, but it's 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 tricky because again, to enter one of your Hydra teams, you're looking at some of your best built champions on your account. Realistically, if, particularly if you're trying to be competitive in Hydra Clash, so you've got to mm -hmm. have pretty good level of cursed gear. For it to be viable to build <laughs> one of these champions, yeah, and yeah. That, that's kind of been my <laughs> issue. Uh, actually, Gwendolyn's also in lethal, so I, I've gone for <laughs> Gwendolyn and Razelvarga both in lethal, um, and Michinaki did not. I think even Sakir might have ended up in in lethal. Actually, <laughs> so, <laughs> there you go. There's like there's so many so many builds. Uh, no, Sakir's actually in relentless <laughs> at the moment. Um, but I think when I build Grazur into Relentless, then maybe Michinaki, 
will have to go into something else. But it, mm-hmm, it, it mm-hmm. is a maze. It becomes very, very challenging. <laughs> yep. Grisor is also pretty good in Cursed as well. Um, but again, you need to have high speed, enough accuracy. You know, he's pretty good with resist because the increase resists. So yeah, again, it's finding that balance. I, I mean, it is difficult with the game. Uh, we were saying before we started recording, or I was saying, I think the Hell Hades optimizer is almost essential for a, a later game account these days because there's so many builds and permutations, and especially with accessories coming into it now as uh, options, especially... Um, if you're a spender and you're getting or even with merciless set right which gives you offensive stats on your accessories like how do you create the perfect just straightforward damage build is a lot more complicated like i just have to put it in the the, the optimizer now be like yeah i want this speed maybe these defensive stats but how do i get the best damage it's it's almost impossible to work it out uh yourself i think um, it, I, I completely agree particularly if you think of the sheer number of builds that you're having to do mm. and the amount of artifacts on the account now again if we, <laughs> we keep jumping between yeah. spreadsheet and uh, and game but if i go for a quick two and a half thousand artifacts <laughs> like, <laughs> no one is able to manually <laughs> build your absolute best champions anymore i do build no. manually some throwaway builds that are just you know someone who's got no gear and i need to use them in curse city i won't bother using the optimizer for that because yeah, yeah. I, I can just find roughly the gear I need from things that aren't being used uh, to, to muddle together. But to get your absolute best builds out of 2,500 uh, artifacts plus God knows how many, uh, 1,900 uh, accessories, it's like, how? <laughs> no one can do that. No one has the time <laughs> or yeah. the desire to do that manually, realistically, and actually end up with the best results so it is it's become a mandatory tool uh they've added mm-hmm. so many gear sets so many permutations i, I do think like uh, you can see when we go back to the spreadsheet again you can see the the guidance on how to do the builds is written in <laughs> optimizer language <laughs> basically <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of you know you pick this uh this sol- solve mode and like you say with duchess although i would still solve for max hp it might be that you can you can actually pair that with uh say 120k hp min uh so you can yeah, kind of yeah. you can force it yourself to do the max ehp but tilting towards hp so there are kind of like ways of of tweaking the same solve mode i wouldn't actually just take her out of max ehp and go for uh go for priority hp and just ramp that up i'd still prefer to try and balance it out uh to uh the maximum effective hp but mm. force it to to favor hp a little bit so if you think like the default tilt is 50 50 all we're saying is still max the ehp but maybe just put like 60 or 65 percent of the weighting on hp like yeah, that, that's, that's my way of, of kind of doing it of achieving that same that same goal or that same result uh but in a mm. in a robust way shall we say but i think yeah. that's probably <laughs> enough for, for this video on my account um <laughs> I don't know if we've actually solved anything or, or come up with any firm conclusions, but we've given yeah. the audience a just lot to think about. As before, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just as clueless as we were before. But this is, <laughs> I'm going to keep, spend a bit more time on this. This is basically what I'm going to go into. So as soon as we get the free gear drops, I know exactly what champions I'm building in, what my intended stats are, and my intended set sets are, and I'm going to have picked which builds I'm going to do first. So my priority mm-hmm. builds are going to be the ones I'm going to highlight in yellow. And because they're kind of grouped up by champion type, you're tending not to use the same gear in each, uh, you know, in different areas. So for the most part, my ref- my hydrid builds, reflex, relentless, provoke, cursed, all of these kind of things, I'm not using them anywhere else. So they'll get my yeah. best versions of those. You know, my Nuka builds, they'll get my best Savage Lethal, maybe Stone Skin if I can fit it in. And they'll get my Nuke Stone Skin. But then my Cleansers, Control Champion Supports will get the Support Stone Skin. And again, it just becomes like a cascade. As long as you're 
keeping a track of which champion you're building with which purpose and you make sure that you're picking your best gear in that slot you know you're not going to cross have a negative cross effect basically like i know if i build my grazer in my best relentless gear i'm unlikely to be using any gear piece that i was going to need on um on like harima or something yeah equipment. yeah yeah but i probably good- would go for my duchess build first then i'm going to build my pvp live arena nukas then i'm going to build my <laughs> pvp uh control and other live arena champions that i want alongside then i'll probably mm. do my hydra champions and then i'll go back and fill in the tag team ones it's probably yeah. the, the approach i'm going to take yeah i agree that's definitely what i do as well like uh, i like your priority system here marking them as priority i think that's good like that's what i found to be kind of necessary as well like going into the optimizer be like okay Deal gear from everyone, let's say King Narcissus, Harima, they're quite different gear, well, somewhat different gear, HP and defense scaling. So be like, okay, you guys, let's say, put in Narcissus first, take every gear from the account, great. Do Harima next, okay, great. And then lock those away. And then the nukers after that can can take, but not from them, right? It's it's getting that best gear onto the champs you have as priority. Yeah, exactly. So what I'll I'll actually do when we do this max re-gear is I'll unlock everyone. And then I'll build yep. sequentially and lock each one as I go so I can ensure that it's never taking from any locked champions because the first champion I build, there's going to be no one locked. And like you also mentioned, the nice thing about these three champions, one's HP, one's attack, one's defense. So, <laughs> so yep. we've got that all covered. <laughs> and in theory, we're not necessarily stealing from each other. They should have their own best in slots. Exactly. So it is. Cool. Okay, well, thank you for joining and uh, <laughs> part of this marathon <laughs> collaboration as always. Yeah, we, we should just start a podcast at this point with these episodes. <laughs> <laughs> it feels that way, doesn't it? Anyway, yeah, yeah. So, so thanks for joining and thanks for anyone who actually stayed for the full hour. <laughs> it's it's uh, <laughs> impressive. That not only did we manage to speak for an hour, but you managed to listen to us for an hour. I, I think... Everyone deserves uh, applause for that, Uh, whichever side of the mic you are. (laughs) Anyway, as always, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.